Coming up, Kentucky lawmakers near the end of the legislative session, the latest on some high-profile measures. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Tomorrow is a severe weather alert day as we're expecting windy conditions that could lead to forest fire concerns, followed by a possible line of strong to severe thunderstorms. Meteorologist Evan Hatter joins us now with an early look at what to expect tomorrow. Evan? And that's right, Steve. We continue to watch strong storms already developing out to our west. But first, we're going to have to deal with the wind and that also means we're going to have to deal with fire danger. You see, the entire area, except for our big sandy counties, go under a wind advisory late, late tonight, very early tomorrow morning, and running through early on our Thursday morning. The entire area also in a fire weather warning. You may also see this as a red flag warning. It means the same thing. Dangerous conditions outside for burning. Do not burn outside tomorrow because we've got very strong winds combined with much warmer temperatures than we saw today. Our southwestern sections got into the 60s earlier. Now some of us still in the 50s, but most of us are already at our lows for the night. It's all clear on pinpoint Doppler around the mountains, but we look out to the west. Multiple severe thunderstorm watches stretching from Iowa and Nebraska down into Texas. It's this big, swirling low pressure. That storm system heading in our direction. It's likely to cause a severe weather outbreak to our south, but for us, we get the wind first and then the storm potential. All quiet tonight, mid 40s, under mostly cloudy skies. I'll have the full details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. A family from Everts in Harlan County is continuing to search for Michael Lamb, who's been missing since Friday. Michael is 52 years old, and the family says they were told he was last seen getting in to a blue Dodge truck in Everts. They ask anyone who knows where he is or has seen him since Friday to please con contact them or the Harlan County Sheriff's Department. He doesn't have his wallet or his phone or anything with him, so it just, it, we're just at a loss at, as to where he's been or went. The family will be conducting a search starting at 8 a.m. beginning at the Family Dollar in Everett's. That's happening tomorrow morning. A suspect reportedly led Campbell County, Tennessee Sheriff's deputies on a cross-county chase this afternoon. Officials told their sister station, WVLT, that deputies tried to stop a stolen vehicle around 4.30 p.m. when the suspect tried to get away. They reportedly damaged multiple police vehicles during the chase before abandoning their car in a Claiborne County field. Officials are still searching for the suspect whose identity remains unknown. Nationally, 22 people die every day waiting on a life-saving transplant, and someone is added to the donor list every 10 minutes. WYMT Zach Hawk spoke with officials to dispel some myths about donating organs and the need for more Kentucky donors. April is Donate Life Month. To make people aware of that, officials with Kentucky Organ Donor Affiliates host a desk decorating contest with a specific theme. B in organ donor, um, so bees are pollinators that make life continue just like an organ donor does. But some health officials worry that people do not register to donate based on bad information. There is a myth that about not being able to have an open casket when somebody donates organs, and that's not true. Nobody would even know that that person has had a recovery surgery. 1,000 Kentuckians are waiting on a transplant, and it only takes one organ donor to save eight lives. While a donation may not stay in state, location is a consideration. They also look at blood type, body size. They look at the severity of their illness, how long they've been on the waiting list. And religion is sometimes thought to be a deterrent. Most religions actually support organ donation as a way to contribute to the community, to be uh, actually good stewards of our resources and of our bodies and to help others. Empathy and compassion is a big part of all religions. But she still recommends speaking with your faith leader. Officials hope to make this potentially life-saving endeavor more commonplace in the Commonwealth. Eastern Kentucky registry rates are way lower than the rest of the state. We know the struggles that these areas go through in these contests are kind of for them too. 
McGee says educating people is the key to improving registry rates and saving lives. Zach Hawk, WYMT, Mountain News. The Kentucky Organ Donor Affiliates Desk Decorating Contest runs until April 8th. There are prizes for adults and children. A decline in mental health was observed by researchers as the COVID-19 pandemic progressed. And with that, researchers saw an increase in people self-medicating with drug and alcohol to cope. Drugs and alcohol to cope. A new study released by the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism in the National Institutes of Health says that alcohol-related deaths increased by 25% in the first year of the pandemic, resulting in more alcohol-related deaths in people under 65 than deaths caused by COVID. To see that uh, alcohol-related deaths have increased by 25%, uh, that includes you know, medical complications, accidents. Uh, just over the last year, it, it, it's a stark representation of the severity of the issue. Dr. Jonathan Martin with Baptist Health Corbin says it's important to know when your drinking is becoming an issue. We have mental health and addiction resources on our website at WYMT.com. Money spent on health care in our country hit a 20-year high in 2020. And yes, COVID-19 is to blame. As the pandemic began to unfold, national health spending grew nearly 10%, while gross domestic product went down more than 2%. When you do that math, that means health care that year took up nearly 20% of total spending. New research highlights a disturbing trend among the nation's youth. Rates of prediabetes among children have more than doubled during a nearly two-year, two-decade span. The findings were based on data from 12 to 19-year-olds and information from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Pre-diabetics often have higher than normal blood sugar levels and have a greater risk of health issues like type 2 diabetes, stroke, and heart disease. Researchers say they cannot pin down why pre-diabetes has increased, adding that's an issue that needs to be looked into further. House hunting is wallet crushing these days. Home prices have been climbing since last year, and it does not look like things are going to change anytime soon. The latest numbers from the U.S. National Home Price Index shows price, prices spiked more than 19 percent in January from the year before, the fourth largest year-over-year -year jump in the 35 years since the index came out. There's data on 20 cities, and 16 of the 20 have seen home prices continue to go up, with Phoenix, Tampa, and Miami seeing the biggest gains. The Kentucky River Regional Jail is introducing a new reading corner for jailed parents and their kids. The jail received a grant from Save the Children to establish the corner. Kids can talk with their parents through glass and help kids with kindergarten readiness and beyond, hoping to make the jail a more welcoming place so parents can keep a connection with their kids. And as Lonnie was saying, inside, you know, the jail is not always an open, friendly environment. And so he was more than happy to turn it into a reading corner and a nice, engaging place for kids to come and visit their parents. Primary Care Centers of Eastern Kentucky is offering parenting classes to inmates as well. Officials in the city of Pikeville are gearing up for this year's Hillbilly Days Festival with some changes. City Manager Philip Ellswick says the City Commission requested a later closing time on Saturday, April 23rd, which was approved, moving from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Other changes from the City Commission include updated ordinances regarding the festival's parade. Along with those changes, Ellswick believes more visitors than usual will be attending the festival this year. Typically, we, we average somewhere around 100,000 visitors per, to Pikeville. Uh, over the three days of the festival. And we expect an uptick in that this year uh, just because there is a lot of uh, excitement and anticipation about the festival. Uh, this will be the first to Hillbilly Day since 2019. Ellswick says at the moment there are no COVID protocols, but there will be hand sanitizing stations throughout the festival. You can find more information about this year's Hillbilly Days Festival or how to get a float approved for the parade on our website. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, we are celebrating local mom and pop shops today. We'll hear from one Paintsville family whose business is booming.
And it's getting more active around here as we head into the middle of the week. I've got the very latest on our severe weather alert day next. Appalachian Wireless has a plan to make you